Hi, everyone, and welcome to the May Lee Show. We're keeping this train moving. Um, so far, so good. We've had some amazing guests. And uh, before I start this next show, I got to tell you guys that this new year for me was supposed to be not a good one. According to my uh, Asian Zodiac sign, I'm a horse. This is the year of the rat. And according to the Zodiac, uh, horses and rats don't get along. So um, it was it's supposed to be a really bad year. Guess what happened to me two days ago, only three days into the new year? I got rear-ended on the freeway. Oh. Yeah. And so right now my neck is a little tweaked, so I'm going to go see the doctor later. But anyway, so be careful, guys. Anyone who's a horse out there, it's supposed to be kind of like not a great year. So you got to really be cautious. I've already learned my lesson. Uh, anyway, well, this is uh, I'm talking about health. So this is the perfect segue to my guest, who is Cassie Ho. Hello. Who, <laughs> hi, Cassie. Um, she is the founder of Blogilates. Mm -hmm. um, and she is, you know, a master of health and exercise and fitness. And she started, you know, just on YouTube, just doing some exercise videos, thinking that it was really just going to be for stu her students. And then maybe some other people were going to start watching. It blew up. And now you run this empire. So welcome to the show, Cassie. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to meet you. I've we've never met before. We have not. It's the first nope. time. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. But we both have sleek ponytails on today. We and do. I like that. We're, we're vibing. Right? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, my excuse is I didn't want to wash my hair today. Same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ponytails are for. Exactly. <laughs> they do look chic, though. So, so. Chic. <laughs> um, Well, listen, Cassie. I mean, let's put it this way. I mean, you really have built an empire in a relatively short period of time, you know, because you didn't even think that this was going to blow up into something that it is today. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's go back okay. uh, to when you first began. Right. What I love when I was doing my research about you, you're Chinese Vietnamese. Right. Your parents, like so many Asian parents, wanted you to, do, to go into a conventional you know, industry, mm -hmm. conventional career of doctor, mm -hmm. lawyer. And you thought you were going to be a doctor. Yeah. So I always wanted to be a fashion designer and mm. I knew from a very young age with, you know, my sketchbook and me always drawing like Oscar dresses and stuff. Like I always wanted to design. And so I remember when I was 16, a sophomore in high school told my dad, okay, I know what I want to do in college. I want to study design and become a designer. Okay. And he looked <laughs> me straight in the eye and he was like, you are not going to do that right? <laughs> because you are going to be so poor. Oh. And because you're so poor, you have no friends and you will have <laughs> no money. So don't even think about becoming a designer. You're going to be a doctor. Sounds and like a typical Asian parent. Yeah. yeah. And it scared me. So I was Didn't. like, all right, um, biology it is. And that's what I went to study. <laughs> oh, so you did follow. I initially. Okay. Yeah. So what happened was, um, I mean, there's so many facets to this story, but it was also when I was 16 that I discovered Pilates. I was doing Mari Windsor DVDs at home, yep. just like by myself. And then when I got into college, um, I started teaching my dorm mates, like just like casually just for fun just for yeah. fun because I like liked I discovered working out for myself okay anyway um so eventually I got a job teaching Pilates I ended up getting certified and I found that it was one of the only well I think besides like my one close friend like it was the only other thing that kept me sane because mm. going to school to do something that you know you're not going to love for the rest of your life you just feel like you're kind of I don't know. Your soul is getting drained every single day because you're not working towards something. And you're just like going through the motions. Going through the motions yeah. to make someone else happy, but not right. yourself. Right. And so, you know, I was like calling my parents, telling them I want to change my major. I really need to do design. I don't want to do um, biology. I don't want to do pre-med anymore. And we would scream at each other oh, no. every night. I would be crying. And like, it even got really dark where I'm like, I don't know what is the point anymore. If like, I can't even make myself happy and I can't make my parents happy. Like yeah. both don't seem to exist in the oh, same geez. world. And, um, what ended up happening was I stopped trying to explain to them how I felt because they clearly didn't understand. They're like, look, Cassie, if you make enough money, then you do whatever you want on the side. But it was like, that's not what it was about. So yeah. I decided to sabotage myself so that I couldn't go to med school or even take the MCAT. So when it was time to take organic chemistry, which was my last class before I could take the MCAT, I just dropped out. 
Did you really? I dropped Wait, out. You dropped out of school completely? Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped, dropped out, out of organic class. chemistry. Oh, wow. <laughs> sorry. I dropped okay. out of organic chemistry so I would screw up my timeline because oh. everything was so tight. My parents wouldn't even let me study abroad because they were like, you need to finish everything on time to oh, get into school man. on time. So that's yeah. one thing I really regret. I wish I had gone to study abroad. Okay. Um, anyway, so I dropped out of that. They Wait, were, were so Were your parents upset. pissed? Oh my God. It was like, are you crazy? <laughs> then they like started looking for community colleges around me. Like, you're going to sign up for this class over this or OCAM um. class over here and you're going to get it done this semester you're gonna drive out and take that class I just didn't do it and it was from that moment on when I decided to really take control of my life yeah. and um I decided decided to draw yoga bags because as I was teaching Pilates I had no bag to keep my yoga mat my cds my keys and everything in one place that looked cool yeah. there were only like these kind of like meh looking bags that were made out of canvas, yes. jute, whatever. Totally know what you're talking about, yeah. So, yeah, right? Yep. Okay, so then I designed that and then my students were like, oh, what's that? Like, we want one. So then I was like, okay, well maybe I'll like do a small manufacturing round like locally. And then um, later on, Shape Magazine ended up posting about one of them. And that Which was- Which is huge. Yeah. That's a game changer right there. <laughs> I mean, there. that was crazy. And that was after I had moved like cross country to pursue a career in fashion buying because it's the closest thing I could get to design corporately yeah. without having any design okay. degree. So um, anyway, when I found that out, I was like, you know what? This is my sign. And mm. I was really miserable at work. And I was like, I just need to give myself a 100% chance to succeed or yeah. else I'll never know if I could. I right. would I would rather know failing so hard on my face so that I- could know my answer. But that takes a special kind of person as well to be able to take that risk, mm. right? And mm. just risk it all. Yeah. Um, and make your family unhappy and mm -hmm. all of these unknown factors. So you clearly had, you know, something in you that gave you a little bit of confidence maybe to saying, you know, I think I can do this. I know I can do this. You Tell know, me what I, that was. It's just that if no one's going to believe in you, you got to believe in yourself. And I wanted to, I have always believed in myself. Um, and I wanted to know, like, could I get this done? I think I can get it done. Let me prove to myself that I can. And it, it's that drive that I still have today. Like, yeah. I I continue to push myself and challenge myself, make myself uncomfortable because I want to grow and do better and learn right. more. Right. Well, we're going to talk about getting to that discomfort zone yeah. because you've done that and, you know, you've received some pushback from mm -hmm. that. But so you go on then, uh, make this big move, make mm -hmm. this big leap and- you were correct, I guess, in terms of making that calculation because you started doing these videos and then it just started taking off. And yeah. this whole idea of this new kind of Pilates. Right. So that's crazy too, because I kept teaching Pilates in college, even though my parents again were like, Cassie, you need to stop teaching the stupid thing that's making no money <laughs> no. and uh, you need to go study some physics. Like, oh, man. so everything- They, they were not giving me, up. No, they, they didn't want me to do anything, but I was like, this is literally the only thing keeping me sane. So I'm just gonna keep doing it for myself. And what I learned throughout, you know, the years that I've built blog a lot is that I should listen to my heart and listen to my passion because it guides me in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, when I was making that big move cross country from LA to Boston for my first job, I was teaching one Pilates class a week um, to my students at Santa Fe Springs 24 Hour Fitness. Uh -huh. And they were like, Cassie, who's gonna teach pop Pilates when you're gone? Because my format was Pilates to pop music. So it's kind of like dancing. Um, to the beat, but with pop Pilates, right. no, no one else does that. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll film a little video and I'll put it on this website called YouTube. And like, why don't you guys go watch that anytime you miss me? And so I did that. Um, and the next time I looked at it a few months later, there were like thousands of wow. views and hundreds of comments. And these like were not the people from class. Right. And I was like, What's happening? What, <laughs> what is this? Because like at that time, it's like 2009. It's like, I don't know what a fan is. What What is a social yeah, media? No. It was just like it was barely a video. Yeah, it was barely developed at that point of people posting videos and thinking they were going to go viral. Yeah, no, right? it wasn't about And see, what it was, was wanting to teach, wanting to connect. And that desire has kept Bloglotties going this whole time because it was never about money. It was never about fame, nothing like that. It was right. about teaching. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you're thinking to yourself, you're seeing all these viewers from wherever you don't even know them. So at that moment where you like, 
I think I want to do something. I think I could turn this into a business. I mean, what's going through <laughs> your mind at that point? So when I first started it, it was really just posting a video and then I didn't do it again for another few months and I didn't mm. do it again. It wasn't like anything I was focused on okay. at all. Um, but what happened was eight months into my first corporate job of fashion buying, I quit because I got the uh, opportunity in Shape Magazine. I saw my bag in Shape Magazine. So I yeah. quit my job. I was, was so toxic, the environment. And I had no income to pay the bills anymore <laughs> because I decided to just like put everything into like manufacturing this bag okay. and starting this company. And um, also at the time, my now husband, but then boyfriend, we had broken up. So he moved out. And so like, it was really bad, like oh, financially. Okay. So anyway, I was like, okay, I need to start teaching 12 times a week because that's the only other thing that I can do right now. And YouTube wasn't having like ad money at that time. That was right. not a thing. So right. really right. I was teaching like 6 a.m., 12 p.m. and uh, 6 p.m. and like oh doing God. again every single day of the week. And so I had these weird pockets of time in between my group fitness classes. So that's when I would film YouTube videos. Oh, so that's kind of like, it was a I beautiful see. and like, a oh, challenging moment when I was in Boston alone, having just broken up. <laughs> like it was crazy, but like it was such a good schooling experience because yeah. I taught so much Pilates that it made me such a great Pilates instructor. Right. I taught myself how to film and edit and all that kind of stuff. So that's what happened okay. um, in the early days. I'm going to interrupt for one second. I don't know if you guys can hear footsteps above our head. It's because we're at your offices and yeah. her studio is here, which is where we are, are right now. And then your offices are upstairs. Somebody's wearing some loud Someone heels. Someone is wearing some heels. Okay. Should, like, should I text them? I well, text maybe, them. maybe, but I'm just, them. I just wanted to let the viewers and the listeners know if you're hearing some weird thumping sound, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> let me, let me text real quick. Okay. We're going to take a break for okay. a second <laughs> until we get this resolved and then we'll continue the conversation. So you're at this point of just Pilates is your life. You're mm. teaching, you're mm -hmm. shooting videos. And so clearly then you're starting to think, maybe I can shape this into something regular for well, me. Even at that time, no, oh, because really? like there was still what? no like AdSense. Like there, it oh. was just like, I was doing it cause it was something to do and it was fun and I didn't have a boyfriend. Oh, I was like, I, I was just yeah. talking to people online. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, so the breakup you can credit as maybe launching this new uh, sort of career or something. Well, okay. So Sam, my now husband, but yes. my then boyfriend, he was the first one who filmed my first video. Oh. So like he, he, we launched it together, okay. but I think I was in like this crisis mode of like not knowing what to do with my time that oh. I started to film and edit more YouTube videos Got by it. myself when he left. Um, but yeah, that's okay. That so started. there was no ad dollars. There was no sponsorship, no, anything no, 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 like no. that. Mm -mm. So when did that start kicking in then for okay. you? When it started kicking in was when the fans started asking for merchandise. Oh. They were like, Cassie, can we have a Blogilates shirt? And in my head, I'm thinking like, really? what? Like Blogilates is just a screen name that I made up because <laughs> I blog and I teach Pilates. Like, why would you want that? Like, what? Oh, and that's so, so interesting. I was like, okay, but you know what? I'll get a shot. So like I bought some like blank shirts from Forever 21 and we had like a design contest. We printed it on and then it sold out. And I was like, uh, wow. Okay. And that was the moment. And I was like, this is how I'm going to get back to fashion design. I see. So it was through Pilates. Oh my God. Isn't mm -hmm. that amazing how that came back to you in that organic way? Isn't it crazy? That's crazy. Because like, it's like you follow your heart. My heart was telling me Pilates makes you happy. It keeps you sane. Like keep doing it. And it brought me back to my childhood that's, fashion. Um, that I, yeah. I had no idea that's how it happened. So yeah. therefore, that's obviously why you still have the activewear line. Mm -hmm. You have merchandise, mm -hmm. right, that you still sell. Yeah. And you continue, you know, obviously your blog Lottie's business. Yeah. So, okay. So I have to ask then, your parents, did they mm -hmm. finally come around? <laughs> um, okay. I have a really complicated relationship with my parents. Yeah, okay. I think it's like with a lot of other Asian children, um, it's never good enough type mentality. Oh, honey, 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 honey. Yeah. <laughs> you do not have to tell me about that. Yeah. I, I even at my age yeah. and with the successes that I've had uh -huh. in this industry, 
good enough. I know. Still could do more. I know. I know. <laughs> it's so, hard. So, you know, I, at first it was like, try, I was trying to explain to them what I was doing yeah. and they didn't get it. And I went and going to go back to school and get a master's or something, you know, yes. that whole talk. Yes. And My then, mom still wants me to get a PhD by the way. So yeah. Are you serious? No, I'm totally serious. Oh my God. Yep. Absolutely. Wow. I know. Yeah. Okay. So I get it. I get well, it. Well, you know, and then, you know, there's moments when they are happy, but then there's moments where they're like, oh, well, how much did that brand deal make? Well, couldn't you get more? Like, oh. it's like that. It like never stops. Oh. It's like different types of yep. like push. Yep. But, you know, I sometimes I wonder, like, am I the way I am? Why do I continue pushing myself? Is it because of the way they raised me to want to be better? Or is there something innate? It's probably a nice mixture of both. Yeah. Um, so I don't regret how it was brought up, but sometimes I wish I could have just a better relationship with my parents. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really tough relationship that a lot of folks who haven't been through it don't understand. Like for mm -hmm. instance, my non-Asian friends, mm -hmm. when they hear the stories, mm -hmm. they're like, well, why don't you just tell your mother to shut up? Or what? I'm like, no, no, nope. no, no, no. That will never happen. No, mm -mm. Because there is that idea of pili uh, filial piety, you know, in Asia, which is that, you know, respecting elders, right? Respecting yep. your ancestors, mm -hmm. all of that. And that you kind of can't get around. No. You know, no matter how Westernized you become, I think that's still in us. Uh, to a certain degree. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and always wanting our parents approval, yes. even if it makes us mad. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I think it's also kind of guilt, but also I, I think it's a feeling of knowing that our parents made sacrifices as immigrants, yeah. you know, and coming to America or wherever they went to try to seek a better life for their family. Mm -hmm. And I think there's part of that too, with children feeling like we need to give back in that sense. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So, okay. So your parents are okay with it. They're not like a hundred percent, a hundred percent on board. I mean, they still must be proud. I mean, I think they're proud, but it's almost like, I don't know what it is. Like, do they not want to be so proud that, so that you, you feel like you've accomplished something. So you stop. Like, right. I, I don't know, like they're proud, but it's, I don't know. There's something. Yeah. I, get, yeah, no, I can't even explain it. No, I, I, it's hard to explain. Yeah, it is. But I think a lot of our listeners and viewers probably can relate mm. for sure to that whole concept. Um, all right. So then you basically opened up, you know, in this, in, with this business and your blog, mm. because you really was, you were trying to be very authentic with yourself and your own experiences. Um, in 2012, you said you went to, into a bikini competition and oh, that yes. kind of changed your life, not for the better, <laughs> actually for the worse for a while, right? Yeah. So that was really interesting. So this was also during my breakup phase and I was just really exploring. Oh, this like, breakup really messed yeah, you up, girl. Uh, it really did. But <laughs> also like gave me a lot of stories. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, in 2012, I decided, you know, I want to push my body real hard and it's like, see how far I can get. And I was like doing some research and I was like, oh, there's this thing called a fitness bikini competition competition and the girls look really strong and super lean. I was like, I wonder if I could get there. So then, um, I hired a bodybuilding coach who like trained me and, uh, but in eight really, weeks, he really like, hard. I mean, it wasn't right. Like no. looking back, all I wanted was to be stage ready and to right. look like the other girls on stage. And I just listened to the T what he told me. Cause as a, you know, AP student, if the teacher tells you to do something, you will do it, yeah. right? So I'm not yeah. gonna question it. Like you must have some like method. So he was like, you're gonna eat this many calories a day. This is how long you're gonna work. This is how much cardio. Like I was like, okay, okay. I'm doing it. I'll take so all the supplements. Let's be specific. So he like, said be specific. a thousand calories a, thousand, a day so at most. I had a thousand calories a day. Okay. And then the workout was crazy. I was working out four hours a day. Four hours a day. Yeah. So I lost a lot of weight in eight weeks and became very lean. Um, but as soon as I got off that stage, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to eating like normal healthy, not just yeah. like egg whites, protein powder, chicken breast, and lettuce leaves with a squeeze of lemon. Like I was, and I didn't have to count my almonds anymore. So I'm talking norm, normal people healthy. Yeah. I became a sponge and I soaked up every calorie for the next few years and had metabolic damage and could not lose weight for the life of me. I could not, the more I worked out, the bigger I got, uh, the, if I ate pizza or salad, it wouldn't matter. I would flip flop with weight gain. Like there was no control. I had zero control over my body. So physiologically you had Physi damaged something. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent yeah. damaged myself because I was so depleted for eight. Yeah. It was only, I mean, thinking of it, it's only eight weeks, but it ruined me for the God, next few years. That tells you it doesn't take that much time to like really screw your system up. Yeah. So, yeah. and not just like 
you know, system. Now we're talking about like mental health stuff. Yeah. I'm looking at myself, you know, leanest I had ever been. Everyone on YouTube is saying like, you look so good. What did you yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. And then for them to see me gain weight consistently over the next three years on camera. Right. Then people are saying, oh, do your workouts not work? Like what's wrong with you? Are you eating too much? Like, yeah, that, and then getting that kind of backlash, like it was like really hard for me. I was, I was going to say, because I, you know, saw some of the videos yeah. and some of the comments and, you know, people can, unfortunately people can be really brutal. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they were calling you all sorts of things. You're oh, fat. Yeah. How can you be a fitness instructor when mm -hmm. you're fat? I mean, really, really, you know, unkind things. Right. Yeah. So that's going to mess with you psychologically, of course. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And for me, it's like, OK, it's one thing to make fun of my body. But if you're going to make fun of my body and my career, like you don't touch my career. Like right. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I had never set out on this journey to become a fitness model, to look away, to inspire you. It was always, I'm teaching. Yeah. Like what I'm giving to you is not the way my body looks. It's how you're going to move your body. Right. Right. Yeah. But unfortunately people make that association. Yeah. Like if you're going to teach me how to be fit, mm -hmm. you know, you better look the part kind exactly. of thing. It's yeah. like, you know, I was, mm -hmm. I was thinking about this and I've been judgmental. Of course mm -hmm. we all are. And I remember, you know, sometimes I would go to yoga classes and I would see an instructor who was heavier and mm -hmm. I'm like, how can she be a yoga instructor? Mm -hmm. I've completely changed my ways that way. Cause you see that sometimes it doesn't matter, you know, the, the, person's fitness level, you know, what their body shape is. Right. But people do do that, especially in the world we live in where it, everyone's judged by the way they look and scrutinized yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten better with the body positive movement and we're Which seeing you're very much in favor of. Yes. And you've been a proponent of for a while. Yeah. yeah. And it's good to see that how you look doesn't tell the whole story, like right. obviously, but like now we're just like learning that. So it's great yeah. to see different uh, bodies and colors in the media too and advertisements. I think it's a really good thing. We still have a long way to go though, totally. Cassie. Let's be, let's be honest, right? Yeah. We still live in a world where women especially are still expected to look a certain way. Oh, for sure. Um, media, Hollywood, mm -hmm. all of that still projects that image of perfection, right? And I think we feel this incredible pressure. Yeah, and I think too, um, it's always weird when there's like a natural movement, like the body positive movement, then when the media or corporations step in, it's like, well, now we need to cast a person for that role yeah. of body positive. So we look like we're diverse and it becomes inauthentic. Yes, right. And so right now I see, I see the integration. I think it's a good step, but it's not for real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's very contrived, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. I mean, it's great that they're being more conscious of this, mm -hmm. uh, the whole diversity mm -hmm. movement in, you know, in every form. But I still think it's pretty contrived and they're trying to manipulate psychologically how people feel. Mm -hmm. It's it's like clothing. I, I use this as an example. Like some uh, major clothing lines now, they, you know, make the sizes. Oh, the vanity the, sizing? The bigger size, but yeah. then they make it one size smaller so that yeah. you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm instead of an eight, I'm wearing a six, mm -hmm. right? That's, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that's messed up. <sighs> okay, you know what? Okay, so I know they do it with women's clothing yeah. like, forever so that you feel better. That's why so many, there's no consistency in women's no. sizing, zero. Nope. Um, nope. I thought men's would be better. So the other day we took out one of Sam's jeans because you know how they go like 32, 34 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You would think that's like the actual circumference of, I don't know, the waist, waist or something. Waist, yeah. Anyway, we like measured his jean and we measured his actual waist and they were different and it fit. <laughs> and I was like, wait, is it happening to men too? Right, maybe so. Yeah, maybe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. See, so yeah. So, you know, again, it's we still have a long way to go, but it's great to see that awareness, you know, kind of increasing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I need to ask you this because I think it's the Asian in me who wonders this. Whenever I see an Asian leader in an industry that has never had the Asian representation, mm -hmm. I kind of wonder, wow, why do non-Asians or white people want to listen to an Asian person talk about fitness and exercise. <laughs> I know, I, I, and I apologize for thinking yeah. that way, but I think it's kind of a normal thing to think because as an Asian growing up in America, I always, I think I still have this mentality of like, you know, we, we shouldn't be at the forefront. Mm. Why are, why, why is the mainstream following us, you know? And, and I like the fact that's changing too, but did that ever occur to you, especially in the beginning of being an Asian 
in this fitness world of where there weren't a lot of other Asians? So oddly, no. Oh, like, good. I'm so, so glad to hear that. Um, I don't know why, but maybe it was because I've always just been focused on teaching. And when I teach at a group fitness studio or class, like I'm not focused on who, like I, I teach my students, whoever yeah. they may be. And for some reason, like when you go to a Blogilates meetup, there are the same number of black girls as there are Asian girls and white mm -hmm. girls and Latina girls and Muslim girls. Like it's so diverse. Yeah. And I think it's just so beautiful. And I don't know why. And you would think that an Asian creator would have more Asian fans. Like that's yeah. very, very normal. But for whatever reason, it mine's right, nice very mix. colorful. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you obviously are connecting on a totally different level with people where they don't see they don't see color. They don't see anything. They just see what you're doing, what, what your message is. Yeah. Be it good or bad, because when I got on the cover of Health Magazine mm. and I wrote a newsletter to my fans, it was like, this is one of the only times I've brought up like race, except when I talk about like, you know, my Asian parents, dad stuff, but that's yeah. very, very relatable. So anyway, I said, I'm so happy to rep to be representing Asian American women on the cover of a fitness magazine. When you look on the stands, it's mostly like white women. And then I actually got some like really mean emails back saying like, how dare you bring race into this? Are I, you serious? I saw you just like as a fitness instructor. And it was like, this is weird. And they're wow. like, so I'm going to unsubscribe. And I was like, <gasps> I was no, like, come on. Yeah. Really? I know. I know. So then I'm like, wait, like, I don't, I don't understand. That's just one thing. I just don't get it. I don't get it. You know, it's, it's <laughs> funny because I, and we're going to get into some of the controversy surrounding something that you did recently, mm -hmm. but you just can't make anyone, everyone no. happy, right? Somebody no. is going to be critical. There always will be people who will push back or criticize because they can. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's for good reason or not. Yeah. So, but that's a little, I'm a little surprised. Uh, well, I'm su well, I'm surprised, but now I'm not because I remember when gay marriage became legal and yeah. I posted like a heart rainbow or something, something just so pretty on Instagram. I lost 4,000 followers within a few minutes. And I'm like, you know what? Wow. I don't need your follow. So wow. there are okay. tons of people out there that clearly they use me for their workouts, but we don't connect on any other level. Right. Then there's people who really connect on all levels. Right. So you just never know who's well, following you. It, it, that leads me into sort of what I want to talk to you about now, which is that after you started getting more famous mm -hmm. and you, you know, you were being honest about just your life yeah. and some, some things you believed in, you started getting this criticism. And so you started sort of pulling back a little bit. Yeah. You started getting a little fearful about being too honest. For sure. So right? like in the beginning, beginning, I would just write exactly what was on my mind. Yep. My blog was literally my diary. And then as I became uh, more well known, I became more scrutinized for everything that I was saying that right. was like not even offensive. So the first time it was happening, I would just pull back a little, a little more until I was literally a vanilla cupcake saying absolutely nothing. And everything I said would have to have an explanation or else yeah. like someone would attack me. And I just like lost my soul yeah. somewhere in social media land because I was afraid of being attacked. Right. Right. And that was not a good place to be because I lost who I was. And listen, I mean, a lot of people who are in the limelight, who are in the spotlight will say, oh yeah, you just have to grow a thick skin. I have a thick skin. Mm. But let's be honest, folks. I mean, I don't care how famous you are. Um, it hurt. It still hurts. Mm -hmm. You're still affected because you're a human being, mm -hmm. you know? So clearly you were, and that affected your voice, yeah. which is the biggest, you know, most horrible thing that any that can happen to anyone is that you never want to lose your voice. You never want to lose your authenticity, but you no, did. I did. Yeah. Totally lost it. So how did you, how were you able to get back to that voice? Um, and what, what happened to you psychologically? So this past summer, I went to a business and marriage retreat with my husband and this is um, again, this is the same guy that you broke is, up, that exactly. broke up and uh -huh. like, you know, just made you go crazy. And yes. now you're married to him now. Yeah. Yay. Yay. See, happy ending. Happy. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, we went to a business and marriage retreat. It was totally, wasn't about 
anything that I ended up having a revelation about, okay. but it I brought me to a revelation. So anyway, we're driving back to the airport and all of a sudden I just start crying because hmm. retreats like just do that to you. Yeah, yeah. And Sam's <laughs> like, what's wrong? And then I'm just like, I'm no longer authentic. I don't even know who I am anymore. And then he was like, what, where is this coming from? <laughs> and then, I, and I told him like, I just need to go on this journey and I need to write about it. And I need to write exactly what's on my mind. I'm just going like, to do what I want to do. And he's like, Yes, you are. You're just going to do it. And I was like, okay, well, it's going to be something that people are really not going to be happy about. And he's like, what is it? I was like, okay, well, I don't feel really good with my body right now. I don't feel like I'm at my best uh, state mentally or physically. So I want to go on a journey to get in the fittest shape of my life Mm -hmm. mentally and physically. So that, of course, is going to mean weight loss, fat loss, and whatever else that people are just going to hate because I've now been uh, you know, the, the word body positive is right. like attached to my name. Right, right. And that's very much like what most people would think is anti-body positive to lose weight. And so I told him I was scared and he was like, but you should do it because if this is what you really want to do for yourself, which is how right. everything started, it's always been for yourself, then you should do it. So then I said, okay, taking my before and after picture. I laid out what I was going to eat, like how everything was going to go, how my workouts were going to go. And, and I you called this it. the 90 day I challenge. I called it the right? 90 day challenge because yeah. I wanted to give myself a good three months because that's enough time for me to make a couple mistakes here and there, be flexible and tweak, but also long enough to see an actual difference and to build good habits. And so the day that I announced that it was wild. Yeah. Like uh, it blew up. Didn't uh, it? Women's health, Buzzfeed, Daily Mail, like all these like news publications yeah. started writing about fitness blogger Cassie Ho wants to lose weight, like controversial or like yeah. all like all these things. And I was like, oh, my God, like I just want to get down to 20 percent body fat, which is athlete level or not athlete fitness level. Fitness it's not level, even athlete yeah. levels, fitness yeah. level, very healthy. And I'm giving myself three months to do it. Um, but you did put numbers to it. I did put numbers. You put to the, uh, I put body, body percentage fat. and then, uh, how much weight you wanted to lose. Exactly. Uh, and I think that probably, that, that probably tr- part of the reason why it triggered people. It right? totally, and it did. And you know what, but I needed to for myself and coming from a science background, mm. I need numbers to see Am I on track? Am I making progress? Like I wanted graphs. I wanted charts. And right. most importantly, I wanted to know when I eat this, how does it affect my weight? How does it affect my body fat? How does it affect my mood and my energy levels and uh, my fitness performance? So I wanted to track every single freaking detail, yeah. everything I did, everything which I did. ingested, which I did. I and, looked at all your logs. I was oh, like, yeah. wow, this 90 is 90 days. I literally took a picture of everything I ate. I logged the calories and I knew, I yeah. knew exactly. But Cassie, you got so much like slack for this. I did. I I mean, you got, you got support too. Let's just Uh be fair. I mean, some people were really in full support and wanted to join you on the 90 day challenge, but there were some really harsh critics. Oh yeah. People were saying, Oh, Cassie, you have an eating disorder, body dysmorphia. You are a bad leader to women. You're a bad role model. You should stop what you're doing. I mean, it was like, it was really bad. And it was like, and you read everything, didn't you? I did read everything. Yeah. But because I came into it saying, I am doing this for myself and I no longer wanted to be that vanilla cupcake Cassie because I wanted that Cassie to die. And so when I read it, of course it still hurt, but I knew I had to, I had to get through this to get where I wanted to be. And so it didn't hurt as bad. Maybe there was a moment (laughs) when I was like, oh, should I not have done this? But then Sam was there to be like, Cassie, no, keep going, you're fine. Okay. And he was supportive the whole way. I mean, you did achieve your goals. You I, I did. Actually, you kind of went beyond I did, you know, yeah. what you wanted to achieve. So um, I'm sure you're happy with the results mm-hmm. because you set out you know, with these goals and you achieved them. Um, would you have done it differently though in terms of making it so open and receiving all this criticism? Would you have tweaked something? I mean, I when you reflect back mm-hmm. on it, are you happy that you did it this way. Absolutely. Because I needed that accountability. Okay. Like I said, I started my blog as my diary yeah. and I wanted to go back to using my blog, like how I once started. And so I was just going to write what was in my mind. Yeah. Um, and, um, I needed people to know that every day Cassie's going to post and she's going to tell me what she's going to eat and how, how, how it's affecting, how it's affecting her yeah. and how the graphs are going to look. And it was kind of like a homework assignment and I kind of liked it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that ended. So that ended. At the end of last year, right? Yeah, it ended around Thanksgiving 2019. Okay. Um, And since then I've been like uh, maintaining and like, you know, or going down a little lower, a little higher here and there. But like, I'm like, I just feel so good and energetic. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. It's been good. I mean, it's the thing about, you know, dieting. And I, you know, I know you hate that word because you've even 
you even created a video a few years back saying, mm-hmm. I will never diet again. I think that was part of the controversy yeah. too, because yeah. you had said that mm-hmm. openly in pl- public mm-hmm. on the record. Yes. And then now people were like, well, wait a minute, you're dieting. What are you doing? You're a hypocrite kind right. of thing. So how do you view that in terms of the word dieting and when people talk about dieting, especially now with so many people on the keto diet mm-hmm. or the intermittent fasting diet or this diet, you know, that's something that's so still part of our culture for better or for worse, right? Yeah. So I think the moment when I made that video, I didn't want to be on a diet anymore. In fact, when I made that video, I'd never wanted to step on a scale again. Like yeah. all these things scared me because I had no control over it because I didn't understand it. Yeah. And so like fast forward, I think what four five years later or something, I was now ready to step on the scale and like see it as just an analytical number as a data point, not as something that said you're worthy or you're ugly today. You know, like what a lot of people do. So I wanted to first overcome my fear of the scale and to do that, you got to step on it and, and not let it control your feelings. And that I mean, for me, I couldn't step on a scale for like years because I was terrified. Yeah. Um, so one of my biggest victories was being able to step on it again and just seeing a number. And in terms of dieting, yes, I think that word has lots of negative connotations, but honestly, the word diet in itself just means the way you eat. Right. And so what I think is really important with diet is that you're able to tweak and customize your own diet to what you think works best for your body. And it's gonna be so different for everyone. I know there's people out there selling like meal plans and diet plans and like kind of saying, this is the only way to eat. If you don't like everything's gonna be bad and wrong, your body's gonna malfunction, but that's not true yeah. because we're all made from different genes and different DNA. Well, so of course we gotta feed our bodies differently. We're all so different and we exactly. react to food so differently. And yeah. yeah, and that was the reason why I wanted to blog every day about what I ate to see like, yeah. okay, how would this affect my skin or like whatever. Right. Um, so I think when it comes to dieting, as long as you're not restricting yourself to the point where it is changing the way you treat people and changing the way you think and function um, in a bad way, mm-hmm. then I think it's good to experiment. Otherwise, you're never going to know. Did this help you psychologically get th- break through some barriers of your own? Because I know in the past that you have admitted to having um, eating disorders. Mm-hmm. Um, look, I-, I will confess to you that I don't myself mm-hmm. because I think I still do fear what I'm going to see yeah. because that number is something negative to me. It's mm-hmm. not something that's just a data point. And a lot of women do feel that way. I know I'm like very petite, but it's, it's, it's amazing how I still psychologically don't want to get on a scale. Because you probably have a number that like you I think do. would make you happy. Of course, yeah, of uh-huh. course. And it's a number that's yeah. like, it's like we, we choose to let it define us yeah. and it's so awful. So I, I admittedly confess this, uh, about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, with eating disorders, I used to be slightly bulimic for a little mm. while, you know, and I think this is something that a lot of women deal with or have dealt with at some stage. So I know you also did, um, have eating issues right? For sure. So is this something that you've grappled with and really gotten a hold of, or is this something that still you think about on occasion? I've definitely gotten a hold of it for now, right? Like I think we were always flexible. Um, My biggest eating disorder was when I had orthorexia, which is right after the bikini competition, I was scared of bananas and apples and any fruit or basically anything that wasn't protein powder or egg whites. I thought everything was going to make me fat. Yeah. And in that moment, everything did make me fat or gain weight because my body was just malfunctioning. And so that kind of like made me think like, yeah, if there's food that's good and food that's bad, and it put me in what I call a food jail so that when I was trying to be quote unquote good, um, I'd be inside the jail. But like, as soon as I could like reach out and grab like a bag of chips and I like escape the prison, I would just start binging Mm. so much really quickly. I would even sit in the pantry in the dark, stuffing my face quietly. So like Sam couldn't hear that I was binging. binging. Yeah. Okay. And then I'd go back in the jail and pretend I was good. Right. You know, it was just really, really bad. But these days I am cooking, um, which brings me so much joy. I'm experimenting with different flavors and I'm just like having so much fun cooking for me, for Sam, and also for our dog, Sir George. I do cook for him, yes. Oh, I tried that for a little while for my dogs, and I'm like, I can't do this. Oh my God. <laughs> so. We just keep it real simple. <laughs> but he is picky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're, then you feel like you're okay. Like Yes. Def- yeah. t- today okay. I am okay. I am good, but it takes a process. And I think there definitely is a healing period where um, if you are going through an eating disorder, this is just from my experience, like 
don't step on the scale. Like don't measure out your food and count your calories. Like just live. Yeah. And then once you feel like you're like settled, then tweak again and start to be flexible and figure out what works for you and where you want to be. Yeah. But you, uh, if you get into a point where you're just obsessed with all your calories and everything, like you cannot live like that. That is no. not what life is about. No. Mm -hmm. And, and, but you do get into that cycle of yeah. thinking that I can control this, you right. know, and it, and it just becomes this obsessive kind of behavior. Also, I think it's important to know that there are seasons for everything. Yeah. Like, if for some reason you do want to get really lean, okay, like go really hard for three months or whatever, but know that you can't keep that body forever unless you're like a professional model or right. something where like the way you look really does matter because it pays the bills. Like right. otherwise, like just have fun with your fitness. And that's what I always try to preach with blog a lot. It's like, we don't even count reps. Like everything is just like, let's just have fun for this hour, this 30 minutes. And when you, if you feel really good at the end of this, like you accomplish something amazing. I mean, I think that's the point, right? It's, yeah. it's not a matter of, who's dictating like what the right look is or right the, what the right weight is. It's really you feeling good about mm -hmm. yourself, right? You mm -hmm. feeling good in your own skin. And so you went on this 90 day journey because you weren't feeling good no, in your own skin. You I weren't wasn't. feeling good about yourself. Mm -mm. So that's ultimately what hopefully all of us want to achieve is just, okay, are you feeling good? Right. Yes. Not based on somebody else's definition. Right. Exactly. For health. Exactly. Right. Right. Okay. So what, what lessons then would you pass on to somebody who's seeking better health at this point from everything that you've gone through all of your journeys, especially this latest journey yeah. of the 90 day journey? What do you think that people should know um, that maybe they aren't aware of? I mean, you, you just had, there's so much information out there now. Right. There's so much information, but it always goes back to that thing that got me through college and my parents and Pilates. It's following your heart. Okay. And I'm going to go a little deeper into that because that sounds super vague. Yeah. But when you work out, it should be something that you actually enjoy. Like why are you going to do something that makes you dread it? You're obviously not going to do it. You're going to hate it. And right. it's not going to be your lifestyle. The fitness program that works for you is one that you actually want to do. It's like yeah. so simple. And so for some people it might be dancing or Zumba or yoga or Pilates or whatever, like pick your thing. And you know what, for me, I change it up all the time. I'm mm. on class pass. So I, even though I'm an instructor, I love oh, you take, do class pass. I take yes, wow, I take other people's that. classes yeah. because I love fitness so much and I love moving my body in different ways. I've done aerial yoga, pole, pole dancing, heels dancing, everything because it's so fun. <laughs> yeah. And so I think people just need to like keep exploring and find that thing that just gets them so excited that it feels like a hobby. Right. Like that's the most important thing. Now, when it comes to food, I mean that is definitely something that you will need to be a little bit more meticulous about if you do have allergies or like sensitivity like definitely write down what you're eating, pay attention to like, how does your skin look the next day? Like mm -hmm. is something inflamed? Like, are you super bloated? Those, those might be symptoms of something that you're intolerant about and just like figure it out right. or get the help with a nutritionist or something. But like, it's so personal. It's something that you need to figure out for yourself. Right. right. Again, yeah. it's not cookie cutter. And I think no, that's it's what, not. unfortunately, that's what all these so-called famous diets mm -hmm. try to do. It, they try to stuff everybody into the same category and they're not paying attention to how they feel. They just think if they follow this strict, you know, diet or whatever, they're going to, you know, achieve the same results. Yeah. And you know what? I think it's a good way to start. Yeah. Like definitely, you know, if you have nowhere to go, like pick one, like pick keto and see how it does for you. And if it's like, okay, well, that's not going to work. Yeah. Take that one thing out and like try to add something else in. Because when I started my 90 day journey, the only diet I hadn't done was keto. And I was like, okay, like, let's give it a shot. And so really the first month, like it was like, five, I was like eating all so much cheese and I don't even like cheese. I know. And it's then, not it, my thing. And and then it blocks you up, all that it cheese. It blocks you ah. up. But then, I, but then I was like, this is fun. Like I don't normally eat cheese and you're Asian, we're Asian. So we're like lactose intolerant. Exactly. Like, this is so fun. So anyway, the first month my body's like, what's going on? I lost five pounds. Then, you know, I continue eating the cheese and the nuts and then I just start gaining weight. I'm like, oh my God, this obviously this doesn't working. work. So then I had to like tweak that and tweak, tweak, tweak until like I got to my goal. Okay. So I think that uh, giving yourself the chance to try, fail and try again and try new things like that is the most important thing. Flexibility is the most important and thing. And listening to your body. You got to listen. Yeah. Your, your body is telling you stuff all the time, Definitely. but we ignore it. Yep. We just totally. ignore it. Yeah. Yep. I'll tell you a story about something that I did a, a couple of years ago. There's a thing called K Korean constitution, your body constitution. Uh -huh. And a doctor will read your chi basically. Ooh. And he determines according to your internal organs and how they function, what body type you are of eight, it's eight different body oh. types. And it's all about food. 
it's not no drugs, no nothing. And so he will say, okay, this is your body type. And so your constitution. And so you follow these foods where this is good for you. This is bad for you, you know? And I swear to you, Cassie, within three days, I eliminated things that were on the list that I absolutely should not be eating. And these are, this is food. This is anything bad. Yeah. Immediately, some of my symptoms went away. What? So his lesson was, and I thought it was really, really wise. He's like, it's not, it's it's individual. It's about your body and what your body can tolerate and or not. It's about the food you put into your body. So he's like, it's more about the not eating the bad foods versus eating, you know, only the right foods that everybody else says are good, mm-hmm. right? Just because they say this food is good for you mm-hmm. doesn't mean it's good for you. Absolutely, yeah. And that is absolutely what I've discovered. So it's really, it's it, that's why I can't emphasize enough about the wh- whole idea of it's so individual sometimes. It so is. You I want to know what that test was. I want to. It's do, so wanna, interesting. I'll, see you know yeah. what? I'll, I'll share the. Uh, I have sent like ten friends to him. Really? He literally okay. all he does. You lie on a table. Uh huh. And he takes your forearms uh-huh. and he just starts, um, you know, pressing your different meridian points. What? And he starts talking to you, asking you questions uh-huh. about your diet, uh-huh. and, you know, what you eat. You know, and then he'll be like, okay, this is your constitution. Whoa. And then you look on this chart and things are rated. Uh, so double O uh-huh. means you absolutely should be eating this food. Okay. O is you should be eating. Okay. Triangle is uh, on occasion. It's okay. Uh, uh-huh. X, no. Okay. Double X, you run the other way. Okay. So I was drinking this concoction before I went to see him mm-hmm. and I started having these really bad problems. I didn't re- relate it to, I didn't connect it to this drink. So you tell me what you think about what I was drinking in the morning. It was warm water, uh-huh. lemon juice, ginger, a uh-huh. little bit of garlic, uh-huh. um, turmeric. That sounds And cool. honey. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it sounds healthy, right? All those, all those are superfoods, right? They must be inflammatory to you. you. Yeah. So you read all about all these. I was drinking this every, every morning. Uh Every single ingredient is a double X (gasps) for me. Even the lemon. What? Yes. You don't eat lemon now? No. What about like citrus? Citrus is not good for me. Really? So anyway, so I was going, oh my God, I literally was drinking poison (gasps) every morning. You were? Oh my God, this is so crazy. (laughs) But my symptoms went away in three days. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I need to see this guy. I know. But so again, this is not a diet. He's basically saying like every body is different physiologically. So the food that you consume, your body is going to process it differently compared to the next person. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And this has been around for centuries, Okay, this whole methodology. So I yeah. Need to so go. It's, it's just, I think there's just so much out there, but again, you have to find your, like you're saying, you have to find what works for you. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. That makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's next for you, Cassie? I mean, you're, you're so busy anyway, but I mean, like, <laughs> what, what are you doing right now? Okay. Well, right now it's Jan 2020. I don't know when this is coming out, but I already laid out my roadmap for the year okay. on this huge calendar that right. goes from Jan to December. And, um, we're going to be launching a lot of new activewear collections this year. Right. We're getting a little bit more riskier with our designs, more colors and patterns and stuff. So I'm really excited about oh, that. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening on the merchandise ends of things. And in terms of content, more Pilates videos. More Pilates. As long as yep. I keep everyone motivated and moving and having fun, then that's good. We're also having a Pop Pilates retreat in the summer for all of our Pop Pilates instructors oh, to fun. come. And um, yeah, so, oh, I forgot to even say. So you remember how I used to teach um, that one class at Santa Fe Springs 24 Hour Fitness? Yeah. Okay, now we have a full partnership with 24 Hour Fitness where <gasps> our instructors teach at the gym. And so there's over like 4,000 classes being taught every month. Wow. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it's crazy how full circle things have. That's crazy. Yeah, that, that's actually crazy, yeah. Oh, see, it was all meant to be. <sighs> see, your parents have to be proud of that. Come on. I now. mean, I think they're proud internally, but they just don't say it's so I could do more with myself. I don't no, know. I know. I know. It's rare when you get an Asian parent to say openly, I'm really proud of you because they just want you to do more. They always want more. Yeah. yeah. But they love you. I think this is what I say to people. Asian parents, they express their love by doing that mm. because they just want to push you to be better because they yeah. think you can. They have faith in you that they just want you to always do better, right. to live better. I mean, I think that's just sort of the Asian way. Yeah. Yeah. It is. But hey man, four million subscribers on YouTube, one and a half followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Cassie, congratulations on all your success. And I love the fact that you have 
gone back to your authentic voice. Me too. I think that's really, really important. I'm so much happier. You're so much happier and that's what counts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Cassie. It was great talking to you. You too. Yeah. And uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. I'd love to see where you're headed next, but uh, I think you're doing okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) All right. Well, that is the May Lee Show for this time. Thanks everyone for listening and watching. Um, Until next time, take care, everyone. Bye. (laughs)